As you are designing your algorithm, you will just have an idea of how it's going to work on paper. You may be designing using pseudocode, or you may be using flowcharts. Whichever tool you are using, you may be given an algorithm to review or to look at to evaluate. When this happens, it is useful to be able to work out what an algorithm is doing, fix any errors, or recommend solutions to improve the algorithm. For some algorithms, it can often be possible to identify the purpose of an algorithm and fix any issues through visual inspection of the code. However, in more complex situations, it can be useful to use a tool called a trace table. A trace table is a table containing all the variables in use in a program. The purpose of a trace table is to see what our variables are doing at each stage in a program. This allows us to detect where things are not happening as expected. Let's look at some simple pseudocode. To put together a trace table, we need to identify how many variables we have. Each variable will correspond to a column. We have three variables, first number, second number, and result. This means we'll need three columns, one for each variable. We'll also need an output column. Have any variables been initialized at the start of our program? Yes, first number and second number are both set to five. Next, our program will perform the calculation and store the result in the variable result. This is then output to the user. In programming, loops are a piece of code that lets us run a block of code many times over. Trace tables are a very useful tool for tracking how our data changes each time a loop is completed. Let's look at some simple loop pseudocode. As before, we will first want to create our table with columns for each of our variables and our output. We have three variables, num, total, and i. This means we'll need three columns, one for each variable. We'll also need an output column. We've also initialized both num and total to zero. Now we enter our loop. In our loop, we've created a variable called i, which will start at zero and increment each loop until we reach four. So during the first loop, i is 0. During the loop, we multiply i by 2 and store this in the num variable. We then add num to our total variable and store this back in total. Due to i being 0 and 0 multiplied by 2 returning 0, num and total don't actually change. We have now completed one pass of our loop. Our code will now automatically increment i and go back to the top of our loop code. It will then perform the code block within the loop again. This code will repeat now until the end of the loop where i equals 4. We then print out our output, the contents of our total variable. Now we have learnt how trace tables work, let's use one to identify and correct an error in some code. Let's say we have an algorithm that we think will print out the first five numbers in our seven times table. We have two variables, counter and result. This means we need two columns as well as an output column. We've also initialized both counter to one and result to zero. Now we enter our loop and start recording what happens to each of our variables as they pass through it. In our loop, we multiply the counter variable by seven and store the result in the variable result. We then print out the result. After completing the first loop, our trace table looks like this. Let's now continue to build our trace table. Can you see the mistake? At no point are we actually adding one to the counter, and so the code, while counter is less than six, is never reached. This is an example of an infinite loop. Let's try and correct the code by incrementing counter at the end of each loop. Let's try run this code and complete our trace table. Our code works. So, you can use a trace table to dry run an algorithm. This will show how the variables are changing. Trace tables will show all the variables in an algorithm as well as any outputs. A trace table can be used to correct an algorithm to spot where something is going wrong. Trace tables can also be used to complete algorithms to spot where something is missing. This is usually done before you start writing some code.